Hey guys, how's it going? It's Thanksgiving Day, and we need to be thankful to the Lord for everything, always. But uh, I just read the second chapter in this book, John MacArthur, Hard to Believe, and it was pretty good. Uh, not as great to me as the first chapter, but still good. The first chapter has a lot of scripture and stuff. I really, really like that. The second chapter does have scripture. I mean, it, it's definitely very good, too, in a different way, kind of. Except in the end, he kind of snuck in more Calvinism, I think. There was some Calvinism in the first one, too. and uh, But then in the second one, he pushed it more. So I'm hoping that he doesn't go more and more into that as the book progresses. But, uh, you know, so I have to be kind of careful going through it. Uh, but it'll be a good source, again, for refuting Calvinism. So, you know, I can, I can put his quotes and stuff on the website or whatever under his section. But, uh... You know, the book's called Hard to Believe, and I think uh, this one really made me think about that even more. He, he used the verses where, like, Paul says that it's, the gospel is foolishness to those who don't believe, right? And uh, he talked about how it was like to preach the gospel in Paul's time, how crucifixion was only for the lowest of the low, the worst criminals, and to, to tell the Jews, you know, this is the Messiah, this is the Son of God, this man who was crucified on the cross was just, you know, unbelievable at that time. You know, they would just laugh and mock and say, you know, that's the Messiah, that's the Son of God, the man who was crucified. Um, and so, I mean, it's, it was hard to believe, I mean, to preach that. I mean, people just got mocked at and stuff. So these false teachers who are teaching really a false gospel, this easy believism, it's a false gospel, and they're going around saying that it's not hard to believe, it's easy. Um, you know, they that's just a complete lie. And I mean, think about how much harder it was then. But it's still hard to believe, okay? Even still, people would say, you know, the guy who... Uh, was crucified, you know, and there's various as aspects of the gospel that are hard to believe, okay, you know, and it's hard to submit to, to Jesus, which is part of it, but, you know, people have to come to the realization that they are guilty sinners uh, deserving of an eternal hell, okay, it's hard for people to believe, they reject that, they don't want to be told that, okay, they think that that's foolishness, that's nonsense, okay? They think that they're good people. They don't think they're, you know, guilty. You know, how, what do you, you know, preaching the gospel to somebody is like pointing the finger at them and saying, you know, you're guilty, you know, and you're going to go to hell unless you <laughs> repent, right? Is that a, an easy message for people to get? No. So, you know, there's all these false teachers out there saying it's easy to believe, it's easy to believe, just believe in Jesus and it's really easy. Okay, they don't understand the gospel. They don't understand salvation. And most of the time, they're probably a lot of them aren't saved themselves because, you know, I think eventually they have to wake up. If you're reading the scriptures and stuff with the Holy Spirit, I mean, you can't miss these things that Jesus are saying and misinterpret them all the time like that, like about the gospel itself. You know, the cost of following Christ. And, you know, the guy that I work with, uh, you know, um, I mentioned like the flood of Noah and he's like, there's some holes in that, you know, those there, there's some holes in that story about the flood that I don't believe, you know? And I was like, okay, you know, I didn't really want to talk about it. That's fine. And, uh, and then I started thinking about, you know what? He would also disagree with the miracle, you know, where Jesus took like two loaves and two fishes and, fe and fed like 5,000 people. Okay. <laughs> Uh, and basically every miracle that Jesus did, every miracle in the Bible, and the resurrection itself. I mean, okay, it's hard for you to believe that God flooded the earth and only Noah and his family and, and all the animals that they had on the ark survived. Well, you'll reject the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. You'll reject every single thing in the Bible, okay? The gospel is hard for people to believe for all kinds of reasons, okay? It offends people, and it's foolishness to them. Okay, a man can't raise from the dead, you know. This was the Messiah that was crucified on the cross. Okay, but I want to get it in over and over again over time that easy believism is a false gospel. It is something that we should be concerned about. Um, and we need to stand against and we need to 
treat and we need to stand on the true gospel you know the gospel that offends people the gospel that's hard to believe and another thing too you know the bible says that, that confess that jesus is lord if you confess that jesus is lord then you'll be saved and what it means to confess that jesus is lord is to confess that he is the lord to you that he is your lord yes you are my lord that means that i am now your servant how can i serve you what can i do for you you are my lord that means you know getting down and bowing down before christ okay and so they these easy believers and people they try to make this distinction where you know you, you don't have to be a servant or, or a disciple uh, you know that comes later if you want to, you just you just believe that you know Jesus was God as He says He was, and that He died and rose again, or whatever. You just believe these facts. You don't actually submit to Him. You know, calling Him Lord just means that He's God, or whatever. It doesn't mean you know Master. It doesn't mean you are my Master and I am now your servant, ready to do your will, not my will. Thy will be done, not my will. Okay. You know that's what it takes for a person to truly get saved. Okay. That, that change in their heart, okay, when they accept the gospel, when they come to Christ truly, they truly see themselves as condemned sinners worthy of eternal punishment and Christ as the only way they can be saved. Okay, so I love this book. For the most part, I mean, the Lordship Salvation stuff, no, I have no problem with that, and uh, but I do have a problem with his Calvinism, so I have to go through that and get that stuff out of there. But you know, I just hopefully I just gave you just some examples to make you think about this. Think about how how the gospel is preached in Paul's time. Think about it now. How foolishness it is to people, and yes, it is hard to believe. Okay, the gospel is hard, and Jesus said specifically that it's hard for those who have riches and stuff because they don't want to. You know, give up the worldly stuff. They're not willing to, to pay the price to follow Christ. They're not willing to die to selves and to die to the world. Okay, that's all involved in salvation. Okay, it's not just something that's optional that comes after salvation. Okay, I'm not saying that people are perfect after they get saved. Obviously not. Okay, but you have to have that attitude, that change of heart, that change of mind, you know, that that change of volition right the change of, of will to to say yes um, I think you know a person has to make that choice a person has a free will okay and just because John MacArthur is a Calvinism they try to say that lordship salvation and all this you know uh, hard to believe stuff is all tied into Calvinism and it's not okay there's they're separate things okay um, John, John MacArthur, he goes overboard and tries to tie some things into it, but that's not necessary. Okay. We can cut that out. You know, he says that, you know, election and God choosing who to be saved and God choosing who goes to hell, uh, is hard to believe. Okay. Well, that's false. That's just a false doctrine. Okay. It's not true. It's not that it's hard to believe. It's that it's not true. Okay. But everything else he's right about, it is hard to believe that the Son of God is this man who was, you know, lowly and crucified. Okay? It is hard to believe that we are guilty of, you know, offending God and that, that we have to repent. Okay? Yes. Those things he is exactly right on. So, anyways, I don't want to make this any longer, but I read through the first chapter and the second chapter on my Facebook and uh, I'm getting a lot of good things out of it, and I just want to share those things with you. There's, there's other things that he said. I'll, I'll go back through it, and I'll come through it. I'm just going through my first time just to get through the book, get an idea of what's in there. So, um, you know, <clears throat> that's it, I guess. And also, you know, the also the singularity of the gospel, you know, the fact that Jesus is the only way, you know, that's hard for people to believe, you know. Is there any other way? No, only Jesus. You know, Buddha can't save you, not Allah or, you know, Muhammad or whoever else. You know, it's Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Okay. Um, that's hard for people to accept.
So these easy believism, false teachers, that's what they are. They're false teachers, and they've got a false gospel. Okay, they've got a false gospel. And when they understand, confess Jesus as Lord, it's like confess Jesus, you know, as God or, or, or confess Jesus as Lord with your mouth, you know, but not with your heart. You know, yes, you are, you are Lord, okay, but I'm really not your servant, but, you know, you are Lord, okay, whatever. No, that's not what it means. You have to come to Christ, you know, as his servant, to be his servant. So, God bless. <laughs>